Good morning, everyone. Once again, it's 8.10 a.m. Uh, this morning. I am recording myself live with video as I record this screen capture on my screen. What you're looking at is Leo 89. I'm going to show you the coordinates uh, that this picture was taken, uh, where this picture was taken by opening up the FITS header that comes with each of the eight images I will show you here this morning. I'll tell you right away that I'm trying to compare these images with the image I was shown this morning which included uh, a dark object where it should not be reflecting a little light off a nearby star. I think in that picture that star was described as Leo 89 and uh, I'm going to show you uh, what these images are pointing at and what we see in these images. Um, this is the FITS header. It has all the information from the telescope, what telescope it was, uh, the, the uh, setup, the uh, location of the telescope, everything, uh, uh, site latitude, site longitude. So I'll tell you um, a lot about this information. It has everything about the telescope and everything about what the telescope was pointing at and when. Uh, here's the date, 10 one 12 at 558-24. So that's 558 in the morning on 10 one uh, 2012. I said it was on January 9th. Well, I would be right too because this is UTC time and this UTC time was seven hours behind uh, 558 on uh, January 10th. So that would be 558. That would be uh, somewhere about 11 p.m. Uh, local time. Actually, let me take that back because this was taken from Nerpio, Spain. Okay, I have to, because this wasn't taken uh, from Mayhill, New Mexico, I'm going to have to go back and make confirm. But anyways, this is the time, UTC time, that the image was taken. I have to confirm exactly what time that turns into, because it's not Mayhill, New Mexico, it's Nerpio, Spain. So I have to find out what UTC time it is in Nerpio, Spain, uh, what the difference is, and that would describe what time it was. So, um... The deal with that is if, like, let's say it was, these images could these images could have been taken on uh, the next night, not that night, which is going to be unfortunate for me, because you know, so I'm sure some are going to say, oh well, it disappeared or something like that. But let's just go look anyways. We'll we'll confirm what time this was taken. Uh, the images I was shown this morning were described as being being taken on January 9th. Um, I have to discover because I don't know right off the top of my head. Nerpio, Spain, where it lies with UTC, but it's it's close to this time, closer than what I said, and closer to the time I was actually taking it, because when I was taking the images, it was uh, January 9th, where I was taking the images from, so it's kind of interesting. Where I was taking the images from, it was January 9th, but where the images were being taken, it was on January 10th, at such and such time. But we can go into that further in a further screen capture, because uh, I want to get into this. Uh, here is where the telescope was pointing and you'll find that these coordinates are very familiar to the image that was shown to us this morning or at least shown to me. They happen to be the very exact coordinates. 113421 right ascension declination plus 30335 and this is what I see when uh, the images come back. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a flip blink because I'll tell you that I took eight images. I took two luminance filters. I took two uh, red filters, I took two green filters, and I took two blue filters. And I'm showing you now on the screen the blink. And it'll speed up here once they all load. And basically what this shows you, it shows you uh, the images, you know, like real time. It shows the movie of the sky that evening. And there's, uh, see, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. There should be a, another one, but we're missing the last one in the blink because that's sometimes how the blink works. Uh, I'll tell you that I examined uh, this part of space uh, and compared it to the image that we were shown, and it is not similar. And it's just not similar to me, so I've been unable to match what this is, these coordinates, this picture, to what I was shown this morning. If you can, please uh, do that and take every opportunity to review the images 
and help me discover what I'm missing. Okay, I'm going to stop. And I'll tell you that I'm, I'm going through these images for the first time with you. This is not a pre-planned uh, review. I haven't set anything up. Uh, I want to know just as well as every well, everyone else wants to know what's going on uh, in the space outside our atmosphere. I'm going to see if I can do the blink from here. I'm going to move this out of the way again. Yes, we have this. This is my computer not happy with me, so I'm sorry. And it's interesting. Every time I uh, do these, I always find it very interesting. Now with the images I took, I can make a color, color composites of this as well. I'm going to keep trying to zoom in. My problem is I won't be able to move around with my zoom in. So basically what we're doing is we're zooming in to Leo 89 right now. This is the live film captured that evening seven images of it, seven out of eight. The eight is stuck in the transition of the blink. And you see one, two, one, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Because each filter, because each one, each move is a different filter. You know, if I was looking for a comet, I would look for something moving ag against the grain. I'm going to go in a future video and compare, you know, find out what the magnitude are of these stars that we're seeing, what I'm capable of seeing, and that will tell you uh, the magnitude ability of the images that we've taken. I mean, some of these are very faint stars. Luminance, luminance, red, red, green, blue, and as I change through the filters, you'll you'll notice we lose some of the um, visible light because uh, the filters are you know blocking some of it. But I know that we've got a good image of the coordinates as they were described to us. I have very few dead pixels, anything really causing, uh, you know, this appears to be something dead here. We're very small compared to the rest of the image. You'll see something, um, those are dead pixels in the frame. You see everything I see here, one, two, three, four, five, I'm, I'm looking for, oh, I mean, basically what I'm trying to do is compare it to the image I was shown this morning, and, and I am unable to. If you are able to, um, that would be great for the uh, for the effort. Now I'm going to go back. I'll continue to try to compare them and find out. You know, I just have a totally different, I'm getting a totally different vibe from these images, from this image here, than anything I, than what I was shown um, in the image I was looking at this morning. Now, see that that's a good shot right there. And my computer's saying, ah, my computer, computer's freezing up on me. It's saying, oh no, that's not very good. So, I guess my early report this morning is, I cannot match up my images to the image I was shown this morning, though both telescopes were pointed in the same, at the same coordinates, though varied by under 24 hours. I know that these photos this my set of eight photos and that one image I was shown this morning 
were taken within 24 hours of each other. I have to perfect my uh, time zone explanation. Uh, basically, I was taking these pictures from Houston, Texas on January 9th using a telescope that was already into January 10th um, from Nerpio, Spain. So whatever Nerpio, Spain is, uh, plus or minus UTC time uh, will determine, uh, you know, I think it'll be it'll be discovered that at Nerpio, Spain, when I was taking these pictures, was January 10th, but um, when I was taking them, it was still January 9th. I don't know. I wish I could really just put the images next door to each other and have the comparison that way. I will tell you that I have not flipped or flipped these images uh, anyway. This is, this is the way the images came off the FTP server of itelescope.net. I've always trusted my images from them. Uh, they've always produced great results. I know that the space we're looking at right there is uh, the coordinates that I put into the telescope, which uh, have been told to us are the same coordinates as the image that was shown to me this morning. In that image, there was a black, what appeared to be a black hole, reflecting some sunlight from a nearby bright star. I don't know if that bright star is described or supposed to be uh, determined to be uh, Leo 89 but I'm looking at Leo 89 right here in the center of my image and I, I do not see any of the same thing that's being produced uh, in that image. I couldn't I couldn't find the matchup. I couldn't match the stars up so I don't know I don't know what to do for us. I'm going to continue on this effort. This has been 12 minutes. Um, let me go ahead and stop this. Let me take the last three minutes. and work uh, work the image a little bit more rather than just letting it blink through um, I know what image I want to work with that's not it so I'm gonna exit out nope what's gonna happen what did I do that's not it I want the one with my most stars. I'm going to run out of time here. Which isn't very good. It isn't very good for my process. It's not very good for my computer. You'll see I'm closing images here because I want to get to the second luminance filter, which has the most stars for us to look through. I don't think that one is it. I don't think that one is it. Can I close one more? Now I'm lost for which where I am with my images. I think I'm going to have a problem. I might have deleted it. Uh, okay. That's luminance 2. Let's get to luminance 1. Luminance 1. Is that it? That's it. Let's zoom in. I'm going to show a, the grayscale reversed of this image, which we can bring up all these fainter stars. See, that's why I say I, I know I'm getting to a high magnitude. I know my magnitude is high. I know I'm seeing magnitude stars here. One, two, three. These are very, very uh, dim stars. I'm, I'm going to guesstimate these are somewhere in the range 19 to 20. That's what I'm going to guesstimate. So I know that uh, the image I was shown this morning, I'm, I'm there with it. Here is the image. If you can work it, screen capture it, flip it around, try to compare it to what we were shown this morning because I'm having a hard time finding it. I don't believe the picture I was shown this morning. I'm tired of seeing, 
man, and, and they used a they used an eye telescope photo too. So I'm even I'm even a little hot under the collar over that. So let's work together, discover it. I didn't see anything out there. This is that spot. I showed you the fit file. I showed you everything there was. I'm even showing you showing you me. So see you later.